Buenos días, señores periodistas. Me complace darle la bienvenida a Panamá al presidente de los Estados Unidos. Esta mañana lluviosa hemos tenido una reunión de trabajo con el presidente Bush y hemos podido intercambiar puntos de vista sobre distintos temas, tanto de interés para Panamá como para los Estados Unidos. Hemos hablado de las ventajas y oportunidades que ofrece el libre comercio y hemos hecho un repaso de lo que ha sido nuestra agenda desde la visita en abril pasado, donde tuve la oportunidad de visitar al presidente Bush en Washington. Panamá ha tenido una relación especial con los Estados Unidos en distintas etapas de su historia, y el presidente y yo estamos comprometidos en mantener y fortalecer a través del diálogo, a través de una relación abierta como la hemos tenido, no siempre habrá puntos de coincidencia en el tema de los polígonos, pero siempre existirá la franqueza entre nosotros para poder conversar como amigos sobre los distintos puntos de vista de nuestro país. Dentro de algunos minutos tendré la oportunidad de llevar al presidente Bush a las excusas de Miraflores, la primera vez que un presidente norteamericano en ejercicio salió de los Estados Unidos fue para ver cómo avanzaba la construcción del canal y hoy el presidente de los Estados Unidos, el presidente Bush, tendrá la oportunidad de ver cómo los panameños nos sentimos orgullosos con todo el proceso de transferencia del canal por parte de los Estados Unidos y Panamá, sino también nos sentimos orgullosos de la manera cómo se está manejando el canal y las oportunidades que ofrecerá hacia el futuro. Bienvenido, señor presidente. Y ahora le daremos la oportunidad para que empresas de ambos países puedan hacer dos preguntas. First, let me say something, Mr. President. Thank you for your hospitality. I have really been looking forward to coming. Uh, I'm also pleased that Lauren is coming. I look forward to our lunch together. I look forward to. I'm most impressed by management of the community. Those who are responsible for the Panama Canal have been excellent job. And this is beneficial to the world. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I'm also looking forward to paying our respects to Madeleine Reed. I'm also looking forward to seeing some of the animated baseball stories. The people around here know how to play baseball. I'm looking forward to seeing some of your stories. Thanks for thanks for letting me see. Thanks for inviting me. We have had a very good discussion, and it's important to have a discussion because we're friends. And uh, one of the matters we discussed was how do we work together to improve the lives of our respective citizens. And one way is through trade. We're in the midst of negotiating a free trade agreement. And I told the president this free trade agreement is important for America. As he told me, it's important for Panama. And we're close to coming to an agreement. And we'll continue to work on that agreement for the good of our respective peoples. I also told him that I was pleased with the leadership of Panama and Argentina. 29 nations said loud and clear it's important for us to continue to advance a trade agenda that is positive for the people of this hemisphere. And I appreciated uh, your government stance on that, Mr. President. You're, you're acting in the interest of your people. And speaking about the interest of the people, I do want to say something about uh, the tornadoes that recently hit America. I had the, um, I called the governor of Indiana this morning and expressed my deepest condolences to the families uh, who lost lives. I asked him if there was more federal response needed. He felt like the response that he had given was appropriate at the time. And many Americans are now asking God's blessings on those who suffered through this national disaster. Now, Mr. President, I, uh, I'm fully aware that 25,000 of our citizens live in this beautiful country. Uh, I can see why. It is a beautiful country. Panama City is a modern, progressive city. And your government is a modern, progressive government. 
Congratulations for your fiscal reform. Congratulate you for uh, the strong growth of your economy. I appreciate your transparency. I appreciate your strong commitment to fighting corruption. It sends a clear signal not only to the people of this important country, but also to people throughout the region. And it's noted. And it's important that you continue, uh, which I know you will, your very strong leadership. I, um, I look forward to continuing to discuss ways for us to, to fight narco traffic. We're strong in that. And that's important for our hemisphere, not to allow narco traffickers, narco terrorists to be able to uh, threaten the stability of, of uh, democracies. I also appreciate your strong commitment to democracy itself, rule of law, freedom to worship, freedom of the press, the ability for government to be transparent, government to have checks and balances so it's to uh, deal with the rule of law, not the rule of man. It's uh, your example, which is an important example for, uh, for others to see. Again, I want to thank you very much for your leadership. I also thank you very much for uh, helping another part of the world become free and democratic. And that's in Iraq. I appreciate the uh, supervisors that you sent to help monitor the elections, to see to it that those are the, uh, the vote on the Constitution is being fair. I congratulate you for that. It's an important gesture recognizing that uh, a gesture that recognizes that freedom is universal in its application and that democracy is the best way to lay the groundwork for peace. And I finally want to thank you very much for the condolences and offers of assistance you gave to our people after Hurricane Katrina. You're indeed a good friend, and I'm proud to be here to, to confirm that friendship. Dos preguntas, pues, a tu propio periodista. Gracias, presidente. Buenos días. Hablamos del Tratado de Libre Comercio. Eh, hay comentarios, eh, señor presidente, de que su apoyo en el Congreso ha, ha disminuido y que el Tratado de Libre Comercio con Centroamérica se aprobó por un margen muy estrecho. ¿Cuáles son las posibilidades reales de conseguir ese apoyo en el Congreso? para lograr la ratificación de un tratado de libre comercio con los Estados Unidos y también hay preocupación en Panamá acerca del tema de las áreas contaminadas durante la presencia militar norteamericana luego de la construcción del canal, entiéndase los polígonos en Emperador y la San José y el compromiso de, de Estados Unidos de si se pueden descontaminar estas áreas. Bueno, muchas gracias. Primero, déjame empezar con las chances de obtener el acuerdo. El primer paso es obtener el acuerdo y estamos llegando cerca. And uh, I, we talked to uh, Trade Minister Portman uh, yesterday uh, on the way here to Panama. Uh, he understands how important that place, the priority that place on this agreement. Uh, and uh, he's, he's got to continue to work with it. Uh, secondly, uh, we're going to have to work the Congress. Uh, we talked about working the Congress. I'll do my best to work in the Congress. Uh, and the Panamanian government understands that once they get an agreement, that uh, ministers and friends and allies of Panama will go work in Congress in one area that we need to make progress on is with the Democrat Party. The Democrat Party is uh, a free, for, for many sessions, was a free trade party. Not totally, but they have, let me rephrase that, the Democrat Party has free trade members. We're willing to make the right decisions based not on politics, but based on what's best for the interests of the country. And that spirit has uh, dissipated in uh, recent votes, and Panama can help reinvigorate the spirit. We can help to make sure this isn't just such a partisan issue, that people are unwilling to make a vote based upon their principle and what's right for our respective countries. Uh, secondly, um, we had obligations under the treaty and we felt like we met those obligations. There is a difference of opinion. And uh, so we have a disagreement that we will continue to discuss. And we're able to do so in a way that I think is constructive because we're friends. A death. Back in, back in October of 2000, Mr. President. This October is of 2000? Yes, sir. 
back in October of 2000, this is what you said. Okay. We will ask not only what is legal, but what is right, not what the lawyers allow, but what the public deserves. In the CIA lead case, has your administration conducted this campaign promise? In the department, I didn't hear you. In the CIA lead case, has your administration lived up to this campaign? Oh, Dad, look, I, I said the other day uh, to the press corps that was assembled in Argentina that uh, there's still an ongoing investigation. We take this investigation very seriously and we'll continue to cooperate during the investigation. discussing a way forward for the FTAA. 29 of the 34 countries. There was a, uh, a strong approval for the concept of working together to put a, agreements in place that will enable us to compete with China in the long run, for example. And so I, I found the spirit for free trade to be strong. There was five nations that said, well, we don't want to do it as soon as 2006. On the other hand, I went to Brazil yesterday, and there was strong agreement in Brazil that we uh, work together to advance the Doha round of the WTO. The question I came away with, which is the natural impression, is, is that there's a lot of people who recognize, uh, by far the vast majority of countries recognize, it's in our nation's interest to advance uh, the trade agenda. Uh, let's see here. Go. Uh, Mr. President, um, there has uh, been a bit of an international outcry over reports of secret U.S. prisons in Europe for terrorism suspects. Will you let the Red Cross have access to them? And do you agree with Vice President Cheney that the CIA should be exempt from legislation to ban torture? Mm -hmm. uh, our country is at war. And our government has the obligation to protect the American people. Executive branch has the obligation to protect the American people. The legislative branch has the obligation to protect the American people. And we are aggressively doing that. We are finding terrorists and bringing them to justice. We are gathering information about where the terrorists may be hiding. We are trying to disrupt their plots and plans. Anything we do to that effort, to that end, in this effort, any activity we conduct is within the law. We do not torture. And therefore, we're working with Congress to make sure that as we go forward, we make it possible, more possible, to do our job. 
there's an enemy that lurks and plots and plans and wants to hurt America again. And so you bet we'll aggressively pursue that. But we will do so under the law. And that's why you're seeing uh, members of my administration go and brief the Congress. We want to work together in this matter. We, all of us have an obligation. And it's a solemn obligation and a solemn responsibility. And uh, you know, I'm confident that when people see the facts, that they'll recognize that we, they've got more work to do. And that we must protect ourselves in a way that is lawful. Mr. President, thank you.